Good evening from Bharatnagar, Nepal. This is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting live for Neurosurgical TV uh, with the cooperation of Nepal Medical Center and the Neurosurgery, Neurosurgery Students Group of uh, the ACNN, ACNS. Uh, tonight we have uh, another great hangout with uh, Victor Hugo Perez Perez, the maestro of neuroanatomy. But first, let me introduce uh, the panel members that are here. Hello, Slavin. Hello, everyone. My name is Slavin Gojkovic. I'm from Croatia, a medical student involved in neurosurgery, and I'm really happy to be uh, in this presentation today. Yeah, I'm a big, big supporter of this platform. And Simon steps away. Okay, Victor, thank you very much uh, for coming, and it's all yours. Okay, good morning here in Mexico. I know over there it's evening now here in mexico good morning yeah. uh, we are go we are going to start uh, showing you some uh, videos about the basics of uh, neuroanatomy um, le le let's start with uh, with this uh, video uh, do you see the video yes we can Victor. very clear okay. Okay. We we can't hear the audio. Is there any audio here or do you want to just yeah. commentate? No, yeah, we have audio. So you don't hear it? No, we don't hear it. Okay, uh, what's happening with this? Okay. Okay, this is a longitudinal fissure. I remove a uh, dura mater. Longitudinal fissure divides the brain in two halves, left and right halves. Other prominent groups and sulcus or sulci separates the lobes. This is a lateral aspect of the right. This is the central sulcus. The precentral sulcus area motor motor area and sensitive area. This central sulcus is also known as fissure of uh, Rolando. And the lateral fissure is also known as uh, fissure of uh, Silvius. Parietal lobe, temporal lobe. That is the fissure of Silvius. The central sulcus runs from the top of uh, the brain, from there, downward and forward, and it, it begins at uh, about the middle of the rear uh, and front pole of the brain. This is The lateral fissure runs backward and slightly upward. Backward, slightly upward. This fissure divides the parietal and frontal lobes from the temporal lobe. If we separate uh, this fissure, we can see the the middle cerebral artery.
So uh, uh, this is uh, one video. I'm going to show you several videos. Uh, I want to ask you if you if you listen uh, the the if you listen. Okay. Yes. We can we'll tell you. John Bennett uh, is. Uh, do you hear? We can see. Well, you haven't turned the video on yet. The video we see it's not on yet. The video, but we can't hear it. No. Okay, do you hear or not? No, no, do not. Okay, but I am I am talking about the video. Do you hear or not? No. No. Uh, what what can happen with this? Because I, well, I I. Okay, you have to turn it on, Richter. That looks like the video is not turned on yet. Click on the click on it because it's not the video is not playing yet. Okay. Uh, there, there. Okay, there. Now turn it on now. Let me and I'll see if I can hear it. Okay, turn it on in the middle. There we go. Okay. Do you uh, hear? No, we cannot hear. What happened? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If I explain this, do you hear? No. no? I, I hear you. I hear you, but I don't ah, okay, hear the okay. video. Okay, okay, no problem. I, I can explain that okay okay we hear you yes we hear you okay do you hear me okay yes, no problem yes, i can explain this okay okay uh, this is the the sagittal sinus if if i remove uh, this dura mater i can see the longitudinal fissure So as you know, this is a basic neuroanatomy, but uh, for students and also for residents, it's uh, uh, very good to to know to know this uh, basic neuroanatomy. is very useful. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, let me show you another one. Okay. So, okay, let 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 let's go to, to here. So. Do you see it, uh, John Bennett? Not, not yet. You're not, not screen sharing. No, you're no? not you're screen sharing. No, you're not screen sharing now. Okay, okay. Let me try again. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Do you see? Yes. Okay. And also, do you hear? Yes. Oh, no, I don't hear the video. Okay. Okay. But uh, my explanation, yes. Yes. Okay. This is a precentral sulcus. This sulcus separates the horizontally oriented three gyrus superior. superior middle and inferior frontal giri superior middle and inferior frontal giri the inferior uh, frontal giri is subdivided in three gyri. This is a parietal lobe. So 
Central Sulcus, the lateral fissure inferiorly, This is the parieto-occipital, parieto-occipital fissure. Um, from that point to the temporal notch, or a pre-occipital notch, that is a pre-occipital notch, we have an imaginary line from the, from that point parieto occipital fissure to the preoccipital notch in the middle of this imaginary line. We have the limits of the temporal and parietal lobes. Okay. Let me show you one more. This is the temporal lobe. <clears throat> the uppermost part of this temporal lobe is a uh, concerned with uh, hearing. Damage of this uh, part of the brain results in, in uh, damage to hearing or deafness. The parietal lobe is behind the central sulcus, the parietal lobe. The precise uh, limits of this, the precise boundaries, is difficult to precise. We can make uh, later, uh, John Bennett uh, and dear colleagues, a uh, video with uh, the explanation of the uh, functional. Yes, that would be great. The occipital lobe is behind the parietal and temporal lobes. This occipital lobe is separated from them by the imaginary <coughs> vertical line. the parieto-occipital fissure and preoccipital notch. Okay, let's let's see the other video.
Do you see it? Uh, yes. One minute, okay. This is the inferior, inferior aspect of the temporal lobe. The inferior surface of this temporal lobe can be seen much better if we, re if we remove the cerebellum. These GD are uh, arranged in longitudinal way and is uh, discontinuous. The most medial of the GD is the parahypocampal gyrus. That is the parahypocampal gyrus. It extends uh, from the lingual gyrus. There is a small, a small hook-like convolution in the anteromedial part of this uh, parahypocampal gyrus and behind the optic nerve, this is the optic nerve. That is the uncus. Look the close uh, boundary with the stem, brain stem. That is a collateral sulci. The anterior extension of the collateral sulcus toward the temporal pole is the renal, renal cycles. Between the collateral sulcus and the more lateral sulcus, occipital temporal, is the occipital temporal gyrus. This is, that is the occipital temporal gyrus. Okay, another video. This is this is nice uh, view of uh, the brain. In this brain, I have removed the uh, gray matter in order to see the fibers, the white uh, uh, substance, the white matter. Okay, let's go to see. Okay, this is the ventral surface of the brain. The, these are the vertebral arteries, left and right. Posterior inferior cerebellar artery. The, this is a very small artery. The anterior spinal artery coming from the left vertebral artery. In the left side, we have the posterior inferior cerebellar artery. 
basilar artery and its branches. The anterior inferior cerebellar artery. Anterior inferior cerebellar artery. It's okay, John? Uh, yes, it is. Perfect. Uh, then after uh, we can see what happened with the video with the with the sound and we can make some uh, videos of this uh, uh, john bennett to put in your uh, program uh, yes so i think there is no problem for this yes this is a posterior cerebral artery this uh, basilar artery bifurcates in posterior cerebral arteries, uh, the right and left. This is the third nerve, oculomotor nerve. And behind the oculomotor nerve, we have the superior cerebellar arteries. These uh, oculometer nerves passes from passes between the posterior cerebral artery and superior cerebellar artery. That is the right third cranial nerve, oclomotor nerve. <coughs> This is a nice uh, view of the polygon of Willis. The optic nerves, optic chiasma, infundibulum, mammillary bodies, and here we have the anterior cerebral arteries. The left, the supraclinal carotid artery uh, with its uh, branches, the posterior communicating artery and the anterior choroidal artery. This uh, supraclinal carotid artery bifurcates in middle cerebral artery an anterior cerebral artery known uh, as A1 segment of the anterior cerebral artery. These arteries communicate through the anterior communicating artery. Let me show you the Hewner recurrent artery. Uh, I cannot uh, displace these arteries uh, uh, better because uh, this brain was injected with a uh, plastic uh, rigid rigid plastic but uh, 
in other uh, conferences, I'm going to show you uh, that is a recurrent Hübner artery. The silicone or latex is very elastic. Uh, this kind of plastic is uh, is is not uh, elastic. So I had some difficulties to to displace these arteries. Let's uh, go to to this. anterior cerebral artery, posterior communicating artery, this artery is uh, communicating the supraclinal carotid artery with the posterior cerebral artery. In the other side, we have the right posterior communicating artery. anterior cerebral artery this is a anterior communicating artery that is the anterior that, that small artery is the anterior communicating artery This is a middle cerebral artery, lenticulo striates arteries. Choroid, choroid plexus. This is known as M1, M2, and M3, opercular segment, sphenoidal, insular segment, excuse me, sorry, and this is the sphenoidal segment, M1, M2, M3, opercular segment. This kind of uh, videos uh, can be very useful for residents, John Bennett, because uh, I'm going to show you in different conferences uh, several brains, so the resident can see uh, variants of the uh, arterial pattern of the brain. Uh, now, in this brain, I'm going to make a small lobectomy, temporal, a, a, a small lobectomy in the temporal lobe uh, to see the, the M1 segment of middle cerebral artery, the right side. Okay. So I, I'm going to cut uh, this, uh, this temporal lobe.
uh, some problems with the with the build. Slaven, uh, are you seeing this uh, the dissection? Yes, yes, I can see it. It's great. Okay, if I remove that, uh, we are going to see the branches, the very important branches of M1. Uh, specifically, the lenticular striates artery. They are divided in three groups, uh, lateral, middle, and, and uh, intermediate group. Uh, in this case, we are going to see only a, a, a middle, a middle group of uh, lenticular striates arteries. When you say M1, Victor, is that middle cerebral artery? Yeah, M1, uh, middle okay. cerebral artery, known okay. as uh, a sphenoidal segment. Okay. M2 is a is this artery when it passes uh, over the insula. Is no is known as uh, insular segment, M2, insular segment. An opercular segment is known as M3. Uh, the cut of uh, the brain is not easy because, you know, this brain uh, has also three or four years in, in formal, so uh, uh, I have to remove in, in, in short pieces is uh, almost impossible to put this in only one piece. But uh, at the end, we are going to have a, a really nice view. If, 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 I, if I show you uh, 15 or 20 dissections, of uh, these brains, Slavin, I know that you are going to improve your knowledge about uh, cerebral arteries. I'm very sure that uh, this uh, can be very useful for residents and for students uh, because it's much better to see this in video than in pictures. In, in, in video, uh, it's uh, more interesting. It really is, and, and you can see it uh, really as we go, uh, oh, how are you performing this, and I think this is invaluable. Yeah, and, and you can ask questions too, Victor, which is great for video. You, can, you can't do that with pictures. Exactly. <laughs> you can interact with the, with the dissection. You, yeah. Yes, yes. Well, you know, Victor Slavin in his spare time dissects rat rat brains. Okay. I'm actually yeah performing craniotomies on on rats, but it is more uh, animal model for uh, uh, craniotomy and increased intracranial pressure. So. Okay. Look at this. This is the M1 segment, and those are the lenticular striates arteries. Really beautiful group of arteries. Now, Victor, most people, most neurosurgical residents don't have access to dissections like this, correct? Is that correct or no? Excuse me again, uh, John Mo Bennett. Most, yeah, most neurosurgical residents don't have access to dissections like this, do they? Yes, yes, of course, I know. Yes, yes. In, okay. in Mexico, also in Mexico, uh, there is no access to this, uh, to this kind of uh, dissection. Uh, so that is the importance of uh, yeah. these videos and also your channel. Uh, John Bennett, uh, I, I want to tell you again that uh, it's very useful your uh, uh, neurosurgical channel for uh, yeah. residents and students, and congratulations for that. Yeah, we hope to continue to do these. And uh, uh, let me introduce Bernardo de Andrada from Brazil. Hello, Bernardo. And, and well, I guess he's not. But anyways, uh, we were talking about that, Victor. In Brazil, he said there's very few 
laboratories. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Hello. Bernard, nice, Bernard, nice to meet you. Yeah, this is Victor Hugo Perez Perez, a maestro de neuroanatomia. Uh, Bernardo, we were talking before, and, and, and I think you said there's just a couple of neurosurgical anatomy labs in, in yes. Brazil. In Brazil? Yes. Here in the city I live in, Rio de Janeiro, we have a uh, uh, very small numbers of laboratories uh, uh, of the surgery. So the most parts of residents used to learn uh, in in patients, you know, watching the, the, the staffs doing and trying to do. Uh, the resident starts to operate in trauma and after we'll improving to to uh, became a, a nurse, uh, vascular neurosurgeon or this kind of thing. Yes, so these types of dissections are valuable, Victor. So I'm yes, sure that yes. people will be interested. Yeah, and I, I am doing also some uh, models of uh, spine and also skull base. Uh, so they are made by, uh, by resina and I think they are very useful because, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's very difficult to get a, a real, a real bone. So this is a, a scale uh, of, uh, of uh, a spine, lumbosacral spine. And there is, this is very similar to, to a real one. This is a copy. Of, oh, very uh, similar. Of, of yeah, is 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 made of a one per one scale of a, of a of a real one. So, and this is very useful to know the the points of uh, insertion of a screw. Uh, yes. So so I think this is very useful. As you can see in here, this is a this is a a uh, non-degenerative spine, but let me show you a, a degenerative spine. This is the degenerative oh. spine. So in here, you, you can see the change of the bone in a degenerative spine. So... Oh, very nice. Uh, we, we have... Uh, 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 facetary uh, uh, hypertrophic uh, facetary so uh, I put uh, some uh, disc herniations in this the, the, the valuable thing of this is that this is a, a flexible spine so I put uh, in here uh, I put uh, uh, an herniation of this disc. So this is very useful for the knowledge of a spine. I have also some skulls and this is like, uh, this is uh, uh, only like a toy in your, in your desk, in your office, uh, medical office. So this is a, a beautiful, uh, copy of uh, spine well you know you know uh, uh, Victor Bernardo is going to he's he's has an interest in spine uh, in Rio and I'm glad he could come to meet you uh, he's going to be doing a, a fellowship at Barrows Institute in Phoenix Arizona yeah uh, are you going to be concentrating on spine at Barrows uh, Bernardo or just general neurosurgery no, no, we are going to work in spine surgery, in spine lab. Okay, Here, here's, the, here's the man. He's doing a book now on spine anatomy. Oh, really? Yeah, yes. he's writing uh, a book uh, right now. Yes, first of all, I would like to congratulations on your work. I've been uh, following you on social media for a long time. I, I really, I'm really enthusiastic of your dissections, of your work. I'm very glad to be here uh, talking to you, Victor. Thank you. Thank you, Bernardo. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, now I am, I am uh, doing some research 
in, in uh, spinal cord, uh, specifically uh, the vascular anatomy of the of the of the spinal cord. Let me show you. Let me show you uh, one so, some videos of uh, this. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, of this. Uh, do you see it? Do you yes, see it? Yes. 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 Uh, this yes, is, yes. It's very beautiful. This section. This is the caudequina. Yes. And and the this is. Do you hear it? Uh, okay. Okay. Do you hear me? We can hear. Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, this is the posterior aspect of the spinal cord. The caudequina, some uh, sensitive roots, and uh, the, the the posterior spinal artery. And let me show you this one. This is very interesting oh. because you know this yes. this artery, the posterior spinal artery. Let, let me put the video in, 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 in that place. Uh, yeah, this is this, this one. Uh, this artery is not uh, well known because uh, some authors uh, think that this artery uh, do not exist and other ones uh, say that this artery exists. So that was about 40 years ago. Now, now I am doing this research, and I am, uh, I am, uh, I, I have uh, the good statistics about the existence of this uh, great posterior spinal artery. This is really, really interesting. Uh, this study was uh, made in 50 spinal cords because it's difficult to have the measures of uh, each uh, vein uh, or uh, the arteries. So, although I have uh, 150 spinal cords uh, injected, I, I, uh, we are going to publish uh, these, uh, these uh, fissures in uh, 50 spinal cords. So, I think it's interesting this this uh, this kind of work. So another thing is that uh, I am I am uh, uh, taking video uh, in in all the in all of these uh, cases. Uh, let me show you this this video. is is really really beautiful because uh, you are going to see the injection of the. Uh, veins of the veins of the, this spinal cord in the posterior surface uh, do you see it do you yes. see it yes 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 we do okay oh very nice Okay, this is the trajectory of this uh, spinal vein. Okay. Yeah, I, I am very impressed ab about uh, about this uh, this kind of uh, of uh, studies. Okay, what do you think about that, Bernardo? Yeah, very nice. I I'm really enthusiastic of the the spine anatomy. Um, I have been doing a lot of uh, surgery of uh, spinal. Uh, Epangiomas, conus, meninges, uh, epangiomas, okay. uh, good, phylum, uh, epangiomas, and I really appreciate the anatomy of spine. And it's very important to learn how to put uh, correctly a screw to examine a, a specimen 
and to have a, 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 a anatomy model with you, you know, just uh, learn on books, you can't do it uh, uh, well, you know, you can't learn it uh, uh, correctly, how to put a screw. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Yes, it's very important yes. To have this, this tact with a specimen, you know? Yeah, 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 I agree, yeah. John Bennett. Yeah. Uh, you're muted, Dr. Bennett. I'm sorry, I'd like to introduce Maria. Are you there? Maria, hello. Hi. Hi, well, welcome. Hi, I'd, like to, I'd like you to meet uh, Victor Hugo Perez Perez, a neurosurgeon from, uh, from Mexico. He's a maestro of neuroanatomy, and you'll probably see. be seeing a lot, you'll be seeing a lot of him. Now, was that true, Maria, that did you learn to operate a lot on cadavers, or did you have to learn, like Bernardo says, through trauma patients? Oh, trauma patients, mainly in Argentina. I was trained in Argentina, and we don't have labs there. Many people from Argentina go into Brazil now, but uh, they used to go to the Evandros lab, but mm, currently I don't think many, many people is going, maybe because they're having problems with the cadavers. I'm not that sure yeah, which he, one he, is he, the main problem, but... Mm, few people is going there and well we are having that problem we have to learn with patients with I think it's not very ethical right. I think we should try to learn first with simulators or cadavers or whatever we have in the hand to to learn better in order to improve our skills without damaging anyone <laughs> right yeah well we hope to hope to be pretty active in showing dissections by victor online yeah uh, be, yeah because I, I went to the baker center in miami to watch a dissection and the picture on the screen was just as good as being at the bedside of course it wouldn't be helped to handle a tissue but mm -hmm. the next best thing is to see real good live dissections and be able to interact with someone like victor in yeah. real time in real time it's a very good thing thank you yeah, so we're going to be making you that know, step. I, John, I was on Evandro's lab, how, how <clears throat> Maria said. It's a very good lab in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Mm -hmm. But in Rio de Janeiro, we, we don't have a laboratory. We just have one. It's located in a military uh, hospital, and we do not have access, you know. But this laboratory in Sao Paulo is very good, uh, but he's not working this year, I, I think. I don't know exactly what happened. I think the main problem is that Broton's lab is closed and many people used to go there many years ago. And now we, we have having, instead of improving in terms of labs, we are getting worse. So I think the, the most specialized one we have already nowadays is in Pittsburgh. But I think there is not much more than that, and I think we should try to improve that. Because yes. the, the real problem here is, is the law to acquire a, a cadaver specimen. It happens you know? the same everywhere. Everyone yes. has the same problem. Well, you know, Victor's coming to <laughs> Nepal to set up a laboratory here. Uh, but that doesn't get around the problem, like Maria said, of having a real lab where you can go to. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I guess that will be slow coming about, uh, but uh, hopefully we'll have a lot of sessions like this. Now, L Lewis, are you there? Lewis, uh, Raphael, let me get his experience with cadaver labs. Lewis, can you hear me okay? Lewis is uh, in Mexico City also from Chile. I guess not. So, uh, well, any other? Okay, Victor, do you want to? Yeah. What do you, you want to continue on, please? Yeah, I, I think uh, every every two weeks uh, we we will have this kind of uh, dissection lab. Uh, video, as I told you, is much better to show you some pictures. Uh, video is is very very useful yes. uh, for uh, students, for uh, residents. Uh, this uh, kind of uh, conferences uh, are very useful for everybody. So uh, I'm going to show you, uh, for example, uh, 20 brains. Uh, in one conference, uh, the dissection of uh, arteries of the, the brain. In other conference, the same, 
But you know, there are many variants in the vascular uh, pattern of the uh, brain. So that's that's very useful to know to know that kind of things. Uh, I'm going to show you in other conferences also uh, dissection of temporal bone. Uh, that is also very useful. Uh, anatomy of, of a skull base, uh, and and also we are going to make uh, a surgical anatomy of plexus, uh, brachial plexus and lumbosacral plexus. Uh, so I, I think we are going to make a good job, uh, and I want to 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 give you the the I want to tell you that uh, is is very nice to to me to to see you here in these uh, conferences you know maria you 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 didn't come until we uh, victor is working on a book now on spinal anatomy mm -hmm. uh, currently so he feels that that part of the anatomy of the nervous system is neglected so he wants to kind of bring attention to that part i think it's a very good idea yeah yeah, Maria Laura, every every uh, book uh, is going to have uh, 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 this this model of uh, of uh, spine of vertebral. Good. I have seen it picture already when you show it that before. I was watching. Uh, Thank okay. you. Okay, th th this is this is really really a really good uh, thing to learn and very useful. Yes. To to Thank know the, the yeah yeah the anatomy. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Can you please show? You're welcome. Thank you to you. Uh, Lewis, l let me just interject here. Lewis, uh, let me introduce Lewis. Are you? Can you hear me? Okay. I guess not. I guess he stepped away. Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Victor. Go ahead, Victor. Yeah. Uh, again, the question. No, that's okay. We, uh, I was just trying to introduce uh, someone that has stepped away, is it, is a neurosurgeon from, ask from a Mexico City. I would like to ask a question, if, if I may. I would like oh, to... Oh, okay. Go ahead, Slavin. Can you please show the, the herniated disc once again in the degenerate spine? The, the spine? Yeah. The, this one? Uh, no, no, no. The other one is the herniated disc. The other one is the hernia. There is too much noise. It's better now, okay. yes. Can you, can okay. you show it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it's better. Better. This one? Yes, yes, yes. That was great. Yes, yeah, Slavin. This is a degenerative, degenerative spine. Mm -hmm. So you can see the, the bodies uh, shortened, shortened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the vertebral bodies. And uh, this is, uh, let me show you the, the lateral aspect. This, this, uh, this is very useful because you can, you can mobilize the, the spine. So uh, each piece is connect, connected with uh, uh, some uh, ligaments inside the, the body uh, of this uh, vertebral. So, this is uh, the, then after i'm going to send you slavin uh, a, a video about this and also uh, uh, some pictures please i would be happy to have them it's... Uh, for example uh, in here uh, i put i put a, a central herniation of uh, of uh, yes. this uh, uh, l2 l3 uh, segment of the spine and in the L5 S1, I put also a, a, a mm -hmm. herniation in this part. So it's very well visible here. It's it's a really good specimen. I really like this. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. This is a copy. is is not real. Is 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 uh, just copy. Okay. It looks it looks very well. Really Thank you. Thank you, Slavin. Uh, uh, some question, uh, John Bennett. You are yeah, sure, sure. Any other questions or comments from the uh, panel? Mansoor, how are you doing? 
It's Hopefully muted. He's, muted. he's muted there. We'll, we'll get we'll get him down to the sec. Uh, and Yo Yosef, any comments or questions or? Well, we got Sid muted too. Well, a lot of success with the people that are muted. <laughs> so, so okay. He's muted and he. He's started, mute. He's okay, I think Mansur, you need to turn off your mute button when you're talking, Mansur. You can hear me. Turn off the mute button when you're talking. It's at the very top, right in the middle. I guess not. Okay. Okay. Very good. Uh, okay. Any anything else before we close it up? Uh, I I would just like to say that in the in the current situation when the labs are closing, as uh, Dr. Maria said, uh, I think it's great that we have our very own tutor in neuroanatomy, so it's really a great thing that uh, Dr. Perez, what you are doing is invaluable for us and I would like to thank you once again for uh, dividing your time and, and really teaching us neuroanatomy. Well, you know, you know, let me just say that Victor's coming to Bharatnagar to establish a neuroanatomy lab. And we've also heard from a neurosurgical resident from India that wants to work at a lab he's just finishing his fellowship and prior and the beginning of the show we had a, a a neurosurgical resident from portugal who has a big interest in neuroanatomy uh so we have people all over the world that are coming and coming around that have a big interest in neuroanatomy and hopefully will participate in victor's channel of, of neuroanatomy we'll, we'll get more organized as we come on and more structured and uh, we're, we're getting the we're getting the technology down, but I think that the interest is there, and the platform is there to improve education and, and neuroanatomy uh, for both residents and students. Uh, Mr. Mark, I want to ask a question. I see the few... Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, uh, Mr. Uh, John, can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, yes. Is that man, sir? Yeah, this uh, MM Entries uh, program. Yeah, hi, could, could, yeah, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, I uh, I am Dr. Muhammad Mansour Idris. I'm a second year uh, in, uh, senior registrar working in National Hospital in Abuja, Nigeria. Oh, welcome, welcome. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be uh, in this uh, quite unique and interesting uh, forum. And I really appreciate uh, the professor, uh, the way he teaches uh, neuroanatomy. Okay, well, welcome, and you're, you're yeah. welcome to participate in any of our events. Yeah, so up to you, uh, John. You are doing yes. a great, uh, marvelous job. Uh, Thank you. We really appreciate Thank you. you. Well, we hope to reach a lot of neurosurgical residents around the world, uh, especially in areas that are far away from everything. Yes, more especially in the sub-Saharan Africa. Yeah. Yes, we have plans to include everyone, everyone in Great. North Africa, uh, and we hope to have conferences online. Uh, maybe neuroanatomy neuro online, so that you don't have to travel, and we can get Great. the same quality of speakers like Victor that yeah. can come into your computer without you yeah. traveling. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Victor. Sure, well, welcome, man, sir. And uh, Lewis, are you still? Are you there? Available, Lewis? I, c come in, Lewis. <laughs> I keep trying to get Lewis. Rouse him. I think he's taking a long coffee break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Lewis is Lewis is a neurosurgeon from in Mexico City. He came from comes from Colombia, but he's very active in the. Latin neurosurgery uh, section, and, and uh, in addition, as Victor said, Mexico has a shortage of uh, neuroanatomy labs. We hope to reach uh, not only Asia with the neurosurgery channel, but all neuroanatomy channel, but also uh, diffusely in Latin America. And Lewis is helping a lot with get, helping us get into the markets there. So, okay. Uh, any any closing comments for Victor? 
Well, I guess no, 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 uh, just uh, thank you to everybody to, to stay with me. Uh, so next uh, conference is going to be in uh, uh, two weeks more. Um, I think it's um, 15 August. Um, we are going okay. to make another another dissection. Yeah. Okay. Do we do you have a title for that talk, Victor? Yet or you... no? We are going to review the the um, some uh, arteries and uh, some uh, fu functions of a uh, cortical brain. Oh, very good. Okay, Victor. I, I'd like to thank you once again for. Uh, giving a great presentation and we'll close it up now so we can edit it and thank you everyone for coming stay here but i'm just saying goodbye officially okay thank you bye bye okay 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 stay there everybody we're gonna edit this out we're gonna edit this out but this is great i'm glad you came maria and mansur and bernardo i'm glad all you guys came and also yosef yosef <laughs> came there <laughs> <coughs> Came late. The next presentation uh, is, well, I, I hope he shows up, Bernardo. You, I'm sure you can relate to this. Joffrey had a couple of aneurysm surgeries, but he wanted to give a presentation. Uh, so l let me see if he, uh, I'm going to try to get a hold of him right now, see if he's going to come. Joffrey Portillo from Ecuador. Let me, let me see if he's available. Okay, I just wrote to Joffrey to see if he's going to come. He may, he may be like Margarita. He may have had surgery. Now, Bernardo, you came in a little later. Did you meet Margarita? I don't think you did. Yeah, did you meet Margarita? She was here at the beginning. No, no, I didn't. Okay, she, she's the resident for, in Portugal now. Uh, she's like Maria. She... Uh, uh, she's kind of like waiting to get her license uh, in, in Portugal, neurosurgical license. But she works in neuroanatomy. She's probably going to be working with uh, with uh, Victor. And and uh, Bernardo, I got I got a, a, a communication from a resident from India that may be working with Victor here in Nepal in his in his neuroanatomy lab. He's looking for work in the field of neuroanatomy. And how, and, how is the, and how is the lab in the power? Well, the, he's just going to start it. it. It'll be small, but the strong part of it uh, will be the video. We'll be able to televise a lot because it will be here. And we'll be able to set it up and try to get really good pictures uh, and good, good videos to, to put online. That's the advantage we have. We'll be here. Uh, with the lab, it'll be small lab, but <coughs> and Victor will probably be working. But we'll with broadcast people. for all, all over the world. Yeah, yeah, we'll be broadcasting everywhere uh, from yes. here under the supervision of Victor. He may have someone here directing him, but it'll be directly controlled by by Victor. It won't be a big lab like Baker and like that, but it'll be. Uh, I think it'll be a good lab, and hopefully we'll. Uh, We'll run it well. Well, this is great. A Nigerian resident, Mansur. Yes. Are you, uh, are you a neurosurgical resident? Yes, I am. Oh, fantastic. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. 
Well, you know, uh, I'll be glad to have a, a, ha a hangout with you to show you around uh, because we certainly welcome the Nigeria to the community we have here. We'd be glad okay. to have you part of it, you okay. and your residents and your attendings. Uh, so uh, let's let's make it. You know, I'll communicate with you by email. Do you have my email address? Uh, no, professor. You can leave. Okay, let me let me uh, give it to you right now. Oh, oh, oh. How'd, you, uh, how'd you get the link to come in? That's great. Yes, I I am on the WhatsApp chat. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. Sorry, sorry. The, uh, the WhatsApp there. chat. Okay, there's my there's my email. Do you see my email email address? On the WhatsApp group? Uh, yeah, I'll put it on WhatsApp. Uh, okay. On the nurse. Okay. Can we put it on WhatsApp? WhatsApp. Yeah, I'll put it on that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, there you are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll send my email address. Great, great. And, uh, and, and let me let me know when you can do a. We'll we'll have an informal hangout and show. Uh, show. All right, all right. Uh, I'll be glad. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll show you how it works and what what we have planned. Uh, now I'm working with. I'm working with a neurosurgeon from Nepal. I'm in Nepal right now. Oh, but, right. He, but, but he has a lot of African connections. Great. Great. A lot. And matter, matter of fact, uh, do you speak French? No. Okay. Well, yeah. we're going to have conferences in English in North Africa uh, also. We, uh, matter of fact, one of, one, of the members of the, one of the members on the panel right now, Louis, uh, Louis uh, Moscotti is working on getting an African conference together online. Great, great. So uh, he's not answering. L l let me let me try to get him online. So you, I'd like you to meet him. Great. Uh, I would appreciate. It. He, he's right on the panel there, but he's not hearing me. Uh, hold on. Let me Sir. let me just send him a message. Maybe you would like a presentation also. Yeah, sure, sure. As soon as I show them the ropes, uh, I'll start. You know, we had a presentation last week, uh, Mansur, by a yeah. neurosurgeon from Tanzania. Oh, great. Yeah, great. yeah. Yeah, on hyena bites. It was wonderful. Yeah, hyena? Was hyena yeah, it was bites. a really good. I'll send you. I'll, can you send me your email address, too, as well as the WhatsApp? I am right now, right now sending you that email. Oh, okay, great. Okay. I'm trying to open my, my email to send an okay. email to you right away. Okay. Just give me, give me a moment. Okay, very good. Yeah, I'll be right back, okay? Yeah, sure. Sure, yeah, we're, not, we're still waiting for Joffrey. I don't know. He had a couple of aneurysm surgeries, so uh, you, guys don't know that. you guys know how that goes. It may, may have got, got, went longer than, than scheduled. Maybe he didn't get any rest for a while. Sure, John. Uh, we would welcome you to Nigeria. Well, you know, uh, are you in the main city in Nigeria, Manzer? Yes, yes. I I work with the uh, biggest, uh, the the largest hospital in the country, National Hospital Abuja. Okay. Uh, it's in uh, it's in Abuja. Yes, that's the okay. capital city of Nigeria. Okay. Well. You know, one of the things I saw once I got involved with the neurosurgical community is the importance of continuing to study neuroanatomy. Continuing. It's a lifelong thing. And that's but, why I'm glad but, I met Victor. But uh, what it's like in Nigeria, do you have any, any cadaver labs or anything that you can not, use? Not at all. Not at all. 
not yeah. at all. Well, we we, we surely depend on videos and textbook instructions. Uh, we don't have any throughout the whole uh, country of 180 million. We don't have uh, such a uh, facility. Okay, we, yeah, we hope, we've said this before, but we hope with Victor we'll be able to fill, help fill that void of, of neurosurgery, lab, neuroanatomy labs online. So you, you can see dissect, you can see dissections like Victor just did. You came a little late, but yeah, he did an excellent dissection of the parts of the brain. Uh, and we're able, and we're able to enter you know the big the big difference, man, sir. It's not just watching a video. You're able to interact with Victor and ask questions, and he's able to address you know concerns. So I think it's a little more valuable than just watching a video. Yes, it is. So uh, okay, we're still waiting for Lewis. Can you hear me yet? No, we can't. Yo, Yusef, can you please introduce yourself to Victor? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, Dr. Victor. I'm Yusuf. I'm a fourth year medical student. How are you? I think you, you, may have met, you may have met him a couple of weeks ago. You came to Victor's last talk, right? About yeah, two yeah. weeks ago? Yeah, I did. Okay. Well, Very I good. My, my intro is like, uh, I'm a fourth year medical student from Dow Medical College, Pakistan, and I plan on pursuing your surgery. So, this is a great, great platform, by the way, to meet. Uh, for a neurosurgeons and uh, Dr. Victor, you're a great neuroanatomist. And and uh, Marco, could you please introduce you? Oh, Marco, you you know Victor, right? Hello, Marco, are you there? Yes, yes. Hi. Uh, uh, yeah. Hi, Marco. You remember Victor, right? Hi. Good morning. I'm sorry, I have a lot of problems, uh, technician problems. I saw in YouTube the conference, but now I'm here. It's good to see you, Professor Victor. How are Thank you? Thank you, Marco. Thank you. Very nice, very nice. Uh, uh, how are you? Fine, thanks. Fine. Thank you. Know, you. Victor, uh, you was, uh, Go ahead. It, it's uh, a, a, a good... Uh, presentation it was a good presentation and we can learn a lot of uh, neuroanatomy and uh, thank you so much thank you so much yeah well, you, you know Victor uh, uh, he's in Mexico City now Marco yeah uh, I visited him and yeah, he's been him, studying. Uh, you're studying right a month uh, ago you're studying Marco right yeah Right. Yes. 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 I'm studying right now, but what exam are you going to take? No, I, I, um, it was in in September sixth. Uh, the exam. Yes. Oh, okay. You you finished it. Yes. Yes, I, I finished. Yes, it was a a great experience to visit Mexico City. So to, to visit uh, Professor Victor, uh, it was a great experience. Okay, very good. Thank you, Marco. Yes, I I met I met Marco about one month before. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we saw each other. <laughs> We yeah, saw each oh, other yeah. in Mexico. In Me <laughs> Mexico City? Sí, in Mexico City. Yeah. Oh, great. We saw great. each other. Oh, great. Great. That was great. Yeah, and now you're back yeah. in Bolivia. You're back in Bolivia now, right, uh, Marco? Yes, yes. I'm back here in Bolivia. Okay. Right now I am in La Paz, but uh, I will travel to Cochabamba. I don't know if, you know, in two weeks or uh, I'm not sure right now, but I will travel to Cochabamba. Okay, very good. Yeah. Very good. 
Let me try uh, Joffrey again. I don't know if Joffrey may have had... Uh, uh, he had aneurysm surgery, so it probably went a little long. But yeah, and Victor, you know how that goes, right? Hello. Hello. Okay, folks. We're waiting for Joffrey to come, but I guess he may his surgery may have gone a little longer than expected. Expected, yes, sure. Yeah, he, he usually, you know, man, sir. Yes, from John. When you're not speaking, can you please mute your microphone? Because we're getting a lot of background noise from somewhere. I think it, the mute button is right in the middle at the top. Right in the middle of your screen, you'll see a microphone, just like everyone. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, uh, Victor, I, I wanted you to meet Louis uh, Moscotti. He's a neurosurgeon on the panel there, but he doesn't seem to be answering. But he is helping me arrange conferences in, in Latin America. He, he's arranged for a conference on neurocritical care. Uh, December 2nd and 3rd online he and he already has 30 speakers uh, okay. yeah he, he really knows he's gonna be a big help to me because yeah. he know he's a neurosurgeon and he likes uh, putting conferences together and uh, uh, he's very active I think he's he was working uh, in Chile but then he went to Minnesota for a while but I don't think he's really working now he's applying for fellowships okay. so he'll be doing a lot of work online and hopefully he'll be able to help us especially in the Latin community he speaks okay. both languages like you which does help but um, uh, anyways yeah just waiting so Victor you working today oh no today's yeah. your day off right no it's a day off yeah yeah oh cool Cool. You so you're flying. You're flying. And when are you getting here to Baratnaga? Uh, I'm leaving from uh, Mexico uh, on um, October 18. I think I will be there in October 19. Are you going through Istanbul, or how are you getting here? No, I'm going to to Kathmandu. Oh, are you going direct direct flight from Mexico City? Yeah, yeah, uh, two scales. Uh, two scales, but direct flight. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow, that's great. That's great. With with, with two scales. Oh, two two stops. Yeah, two stops. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, I got. Uh, you, you may have you already got the reservations and everything. Yes, uh, I I have I have okay. I have the reservations. Well, no you problem. know, I was I was surprised that Turkish Air they flew directly to Istanbul from Miami. Uh, and then from Istanbul to Kathmandu. Okay. So, so that was a really good connection because normally when you fly from the U.S., you got to go through Frankfurt or some other city in Europe. But this was directly to Istanbul. Uh, it was a really good connection. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I don't know if you spent any time in Kathmandu. Did you spend any time the last time you were here in Kathmandu or? I'm going to ask uh, to Dr. Sherian, uh, who is a, what, what is the plan? But I think I can make uh, uh, just uh, one night uh, in Kathmandu because uh, I think I'll arrive at night. So right. I can go to some hotel over there and then uh, in, the, in the next day uh, I can leave to, to Viratnaga. Yeah, I, I stayed at a nice place right in the middle of the tourist area it was very very nice I'll yeah. try to send you send you the uh, the hotel I stayed at yes it was very yes. very nice very clean right in the middle of the tourist area and yes. I took a I took a rickshaw uh, like to a tour yeah tour and it was very very convenient you know like I'm just sitting in the rickshaw going around to the temples uh, but you know there was a lot of damage done by the earthquake Okay. Victor, you're going, you're going, you're going from one earthquake to the next. No, <laughs> we, had, we, we had to, 
We had to, uh, uh, one earthquake, uh, very, very strong here in Mexico. We had almost 400 people dead, uh, wow. 400. So several uh, buildings uh, damaged. So uh, when uh, I, I was in a, a, a tall building, about uh, eight floors. So I was in the middle. Wow. So wow. when the earthquake uh, began, I couldn't do anything. I tried to run uh, to the, the but I, I, I couldn't because really? the, earth, the, the earthquake began uh, very, 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 very hard. So I was very, I was very, very afraid. I, I thought that the building was going to collapse. I, really? I thought, yeah, really, I thought that. I am really, really afraid of that because you know, we, ha we had a very strong earthquake in 1985. We had almost uh, two, two thousand, two and a half thousand of people dead. So wow. I was I was helping in the collapsed buildings. Uh, uh, so in this time, I, I was very very afraid. Yeah, oh, yeah. Did, did, did you just did you just hit the ground, or did you just fall, or? No, no. I I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. Uh, wow. I, I I I stay I stay as uh, paralyzed. So was very very strong. Wow. Really, very, very strong. Was, was everybody screaming in the building? Yes, of course. Too many people yeah. screaming. Too many people screaming. There are right. too many. There are too many videos about the, the earthquake. Too many videos, and most of the people were very, very afraid. Were yeah. were screaming. Uh, most of them. Yeah. Really? So, wow. <laughs> and the, bu the building was actually shaken, right? It was yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, the the bad experience in my life, the bad, the worst, the, wor the, the worst, the, huh? the worst experience in my life. So yeah. I, I I I am living my second wow. life. Second <laughs> life. Wow. Well, I guess you went you went immediately out. You you take the elevator or you run down the stairs. I, I wanted to do that, uh, go to the stairs, but I couldn't uh, because if I tried to run, I, I, I was going to fail so yeah. or, or injury myself because right. it was very, very hard. So right. I couldn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> and how long did it last? Uh, at le uh, more or less, uh, uh, one minute, one and a half minute, uh, more or less, one and a oh, half minute. Must have been the longest minute and a half that you had. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. Uh, and, then, uh, and then there was no tremor f for a while or was it a couple of shakes? Uh, it shakes, it shakes. Well, tremor. Tre did, yeah. After a minute and a half, it stopped totally. Stop. It stopped totally. Yeah, stop. Totally. And when was the next tremor? Wasn't there another tremor later? Uh, the, the other tremor was about two days. Two days after. Three, three, three or four days after. How, how strong was that? Six, six, six uh, point one. Uh, 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 Wow. Level, level. It, 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 so, it was, so uh, yeah, not too much. No, that's still strong. No, no, no not so much. No, uh, no? no, no. The first one was very, very strong. Yes. Oh, so once you hit seven, that's when things start to shake. Yes, yes. That's so. That, that's it. Yeah. You told us that in Nepal, it, it uh, you you had a, a very very strong uh, earthquake. Yes, I know. It was about uh, eight or ten years ago. Yeah. Yes. No. Well, this, well, this one Kathmandu just had like maybe five six months ago in Kathmandu. Five and, six and, months ago. Yeah, yeah. They they just had one about. It couldn't have been more than as less than a year ago. Oh. When I went when I went to Kathmandu, I saw all these temples collapse and damage, and I thought it was a lack of care, but it was because of the earthquake. The earthquake damaged a lot of temples in in Kathmandu. Wow! How lot. many how, how many people did? Oh, I don't know. I I think it did did cause damage with human life, 
but it caused a lot of physical damage to the temples that are very old. Uh, and, and unfortunately, I'll never see them. We'll never see them again. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're rebuilding. They're rebuilding. And I thought it was initially because of the lack of care. It was, but no, it was the earthquake damage that they're just starting to fix them now. Okay. So, okay. so uh, you, but still, you can see when, if you take a rickshaw when you get to uh, Kathmandu at night, if you still have time or, or in the morning. Uh, I suggest taking a rickshaw tour of the temples. There are still some temples that are very, very old, much older than Mexico City, you know, oh, much older yeah. than any, anywhere in the United States. Very old. Yes. Very yes, old. Yes. It's a very old city. Very old yeah. city. Yeah. Uh, later, you should, you should uh, uh, suggest me what temples I can visit. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't know it well, but there's a lot of old Buddhist temples there. Buddhist. Okay. It's just one of the centers of Buddhism. I didn't know that before I came, but it was. Uh, it's it's one of the centers of Buddhism. Uh, the, the, the parent, I didn't go to the temple, but there's one, I think about five, five so seven kilometers outside of Kathmandu. It's a, one of the biggest Buddhist temples in the world. Well. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's got a lot of history in in, in Kathmandu. Yeah, nice. Yeah, but if you, are you yeah. into history, uh, Victor? Are you into that? Yes, yes. Okay, well, you like that. I know Mexico City has a lot of history, and you know who gave a great presentation at a pediatric neurosurgery conference? Uh, Fernando, I don't remember his last name, but he talked a lot about the history. Of the Aztecs and everything during his presentation, it was okay, excellent. Okay, yes, uh, Fernando Ponce de Leon. Yes, yes, yes he gave it. He, he he is a big he's sure. a big historian. He loves history. Yeah, sure, he, sure. He, he, Fernando Chico Ponce de Leon. Yeah, yeah, he yes, he likes yes. he likes to speak of yeah. the history of Mexico, uh, Mexico like, City. Yes, yes. During his presentation, he gave an excellent presentation of the. And, and the, his introduction was the history of Mexico. Okay. Uh, okay. In, the, in the time of the Aztecs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, are you into that? The Aztec history and. Yeah, I like I like uh, uh, Aztec uh, history. So, have you visited the uh, pyramids? Uh, no, I haven't. Pyramids? No, no, I haven't. Okay. But I've I've read a lot about it. I've seen. I was in Guadalajara, but I really didn't explore Mexico City when I was okay. there. Uh, yeah. uh, no. when, when you come here, uh, we, we can go uh, together to the pyramids. It's very close yeah, yeah. To, to Mexico City, about yeah. 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah, I understand. It's full yeah. of, full of uh, Aztec history and full of history in, in Mexico. Yeah. All, all of yeah. you guys, all of you guys, uh, all of you dear colleagues, when you come to Mexico, uh, uh, we can visit uh, uh, some places here in Mexico. Slavin, when you come to Mexico, all of yeah, you. There you go. There you go. You know, you know. Do you know about the Aztec history, Slavin? The history yeah. of the Aztecs. Yeah, it's very, very important in in world's history in general. So we we studied a lot about it, and I'm really interested to. I mean, more interesting to me, let's say, than the Egyptian history, for example. I, I don't know why, yes. but it's, it's a very interesting topic. The, the yes. I mean, all yeah, the they, they, yeah, yeah, they were a very advanced civilization, yes. Yes. and, and the, of course the Spaniards ruined that. They they took everything, took the gold, destroyed the temples. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a conquista. The the war uh, was was very I mean very rude, and uh, it was very how can I say very. Um, the war time was was very bad. Yeah, very violent, very no, violent history. I was I was very interested in the history of South America too, where there were lots of cannibals, and you have a text from people from Germany who went to Brazil, what is not Brazil, and there were cannibal tribes, and one of them got captivated, and he lived there for eight months, and he wrote the true history of his uh, how they cooked people and, and ate them and everything, and it's really. Uh, no, who was that? Who was that again? Uh, let, I cannot, I don't remember right now, but it was uh, this. Uh, a European explorer? 
European. Uh, Staden. His 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 uh, last name was Staden. Hans Staden. Hans okay. Staden from Germany, and uh, he was captivated. He was he was exploring the world, and and he went on a boat, and when they came to what is now Brazil, the coast of the of South America, they captivated him, and they held him for eight months, and he survived. Only by convincing them that uh, his gods will will be uh, mad at them, at at the cannibal tribe if they hurt him. Or wow! If, if they eat him, <laughs> and, and <laughs> like how they ate people, you know how they. Uh, how, I mean, all the all the how they killed them. You know, they had this giant uh, club, you know, which, which they crushed the skull. And I don't know. It was it was very very interesting. So I think the history of America is, in general, you know, living in America, both Americas, the history is more more interesting than than Europe. Europe is an old, you know, kind of. I I don't like Europe. Everything is I don't know, so average, you know, here. Not yeah. in We don't even have earthquakes. Well, even. they they have interesting parts, but the Aztecs they used to tear the heart out, right, Victor? They would. Of the sacrificial victims, that would just reach into the chest and pull it out. Yeah, the his, the, the history tells that. <laughs> yeah, wow, brutal part, brutal, brutal, brutal part. <laughs> Bernardo, did you hear about that? Uh, the, the cannibal tribes of Brazil that uh, Slavin was talking about. Uh, I think maybe this tribe. Is that he's talking about is Tupinambas. Yeah. Where's that? Tupinambas oh, yeah, yeah. were cannibal. Yeah, true, true. Were cannibal tribe in South America, but they they didn't exist more. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. It was in, in the. Yes. That was a two, long time two ago. Two centuries or three centuries ago. Yes. Tupinambas. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, now we have some uh, Indian tribes in Amazons that didn't have contact with with the, the with what we call white people, white men. But have you ever gone to the Amazon, Bernardo? No, I never. Okay. Well, Brazil is such it's a Portuguese. huge country. It's a huge country, huh? Yes, yes, very huge. It's a very different cultures uh, in when you go to the north. And you go go to south is is very different, you know the language is different, the the the, the culture, and foods, everything is is very different in south and and north of Brazil. Hi, is it... John Bennett. Yes. John Bennett. Yes. Yeah. I I send you I send you a small video. And some pictures of uh, of a brain that I showed you today uh, to TV TV Neurosurgical uh, to the WhatsApp. For, oh, okay, in, well, I'll put WhatsApp. it on right. Yeah, okay. You want me to yeah. post it on WhatsApp? Okay. Yeah. Hi, Jules. Uh, hi. Can, can you hear me, sir? Yes, you can, yes. man, sir. Yes, I have sent you uh, an email address. Good. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yes, and I uh, will be following you further on the both uh, email and uh, WhatsApp. Okay. And I I wish uh, Professor uh, Victor Victor uh, all the very best. I have to leave. I have some um, papers I'm trying to put together. So okay. uh, I will see you next. Okay. Yes. Welcome, man. Sir, we'll be talking <laughs> to you soon. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. Okay. Great. Bye. Yeah, I guess Joff Joffrey Portillo, a neurosurgeon from Ecuador, apparently uh, he said he was going to have aneurysm surgery, but he would be done. But I guess, as you guys know, it probably went longer than expected. So I don't think he's going to have a presentation. But uh, anyways, so, okay. yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, Bernard. Uh, yeah. You a minute. I, I have to go. So I'll see you, uh, 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 dear, dear colleagues, in the next conference. Yeah, uh, in the two you. weeks. In two weeks uh, before you before you come to Baratnagar. I'll see you in two thank weeks. You. Thank, thank nice you. Nice to meet you, Victor. Thanks, nice Victor. Nice to meet you, Bernardo. Thanks, Victor. Thank see you. you. Have a good day. Uh, greetings from Mexico City.
Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. See you. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah. This is this is a Nepal victory. You gotta learn this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. They do a lot of things. Uh, like here, like, like this. Yeah, like no, like like this. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. See you. Bye, bye. Okay. See you. Bye, bye. 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 Well, you know, Bernardo, the, the poli even the police here in Nepal, if you're a doctor, you're considered royalty here. Whoa. And they salute you like this. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. And they click the heels together. <laughs> like, and I'm like, oh, my God, policemen have never treated me that way. <laughs> <laughs> In the States, yeah. <laughs> yeah, usually they say, get, put your handcuffs, put your hands behind your back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> you have the right to remain silent. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. yeah, it's so, a little uh, different you, here. Are you broadcasting now or not? No, it's stop. It's stop. I, I, can I uh, uh, Swear? show you a case? Uh, or? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you want you want me to start another broadcast? You want to do that or? No, you you know just a a, a little case of of, yeah. of spinal yeah, cord okay, tumor sure, sure. I had. Sure, sure. You, hey, you want you want to do another presentation, Bernardo, or you want to just show it informally? No, just informally. I, I did Okay, no problem. No problem. Nothing. Okay, we won't. Okay, we won't. I'm sure Slavin will appreciate it, and of course, Marco. Of course. Thank you so much. Yes, this is. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Thank you. This is a, a, a young guy with uh, four years that started uh, low back pain, uh, irradiating to both legs, and I will show you the here MRI. Here is the. Let me four just year, screen share. Excuse me. A pediatric patient. A pediatric no, no, it's 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 about uh, thirty-five or forty years. Okay. It's not pediatric patients. Okay. So here is this the exam. Can you see it? Uh, not, yet. not yet. Not yet. And now, can you see? Not yet, Bruno. You, you're not sharing the screen. You gotta. <coughs> it's hard. It's hard. Oh, okay. Yeah, you gotta get. You gotta click on. The, there you go. There you go. Okay. Just pick pick the right screen to share. There you go. There you go. We see it. Here. Perfect. And he had this mass in the spinal canal. You know, this is the, the corners. Right. And this is this a mass, a lesion. Uh, let me show you another. Here's the MRI. Here's the, the mass. And here you have the Excel view. Here. Can you see it? Yes. I think this is the best image of the lesion. Okay. That's huge. Yeah, it's about in L5, 4, 3, 2, L2. Was he paralyzed? So was he paralyzed? L2. No, no, just uh, just sciatic pain, bilateral okay. sciatic pain. And this is the, this is the, the video. So here is the the nerve roots. Here is the the proximal filum, 
and this is the lesion, this is the mess. No, are you seeing? Yes, very good, very good. Yes, this is the filo, we, we have cut it, we have cut this filo after coagulate. And this is after we are, mob, we are uh, pulling the, the lesion mm -hmm. and this is the tumor. This is the quina cauda, mm -hmm. and this is the lesion. Yeah, it's really big. It seems. Uh, and this is the other part of the terminal filo. This is the caudal part. This is the cranial part. I'm I'm showing the tumor and the caudal part of the terminal filo. We are going to cut it and then remove the, the lesion. Here you can see the coagulating. And now you have the proximal parts of the filum and the caudal parts of the filum. This is a tumor from filum terminalis. And this is the nerve roots after removal. Great. Was that the yeah. Name? This uh, is the tumor. It doesn't look big there. Yeah, it's about uh, maybe four or five centimeter. It's all we did uh, two or three weeks ago. And, and patient uh, didn't have. Yeah, she had charged it charge had had very well. Improved the pain. He uh -huh. he he's not in pain anymore. It was a benign lesion, uh, Bernardo. Yes, yeah. it, it, it it's an ependymoma, a uh, 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 low grade ependymoma. Low grade. So, oh, so there's no spray. It to was get totally thing. removed, so it's it's. It, it, it doesn't require any uh, x-ray therapy radiation, or radiation. Okay. Yeah, radiation. He recovered right. completely. Did he have any symptoms before that or just picked up on a routine MRI? No, no, he has a, a pain. He was on pain, a lumbar okay. pain with, with both legs. Uh, oh, wow. Did the pain resolve after removing the tumor? Yes, immediately wow. after. He, he woke must up been, without he pain. Been, he must have been very yeah. happy. Yes, yes, it's a very good case. <laughs> wow, that's I great. Will, I have a, a couple of cases of tumor uh, in spinal cord canal. I will organize it and maybe prepare some presentation for for the hangouts. Definitely. Yeah, that would be excellent. That would be excellent. Something also, do you, do you uh, have uh, any interest in, in uh, how to say, spinal uh, fixation procedures? With, uh, with neurosurgeons. I mean, when, when uh, this herniation, and when, when you put uh, screws inside. And yeah, are, are you asking if I, 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 you I have been? Because I would, I would be interested if you could maybe make a presentation about some essentials for this, because it seems to be hard to grasp for a medical student. How, yes, how we, I, I usually do a, a lot of, of spinal fixation, but in most parts uh, is for degenerative disease yeah, because yeah, yeah. the movement is, is, the, is the beginning of the problem. So you have a degenerative uh, uh, segment and you can treat uh, doing the fusion, the, the artery disease to, yeah, yeah, to yeah, treat. I have, I have a lot of cases, but I, it's not now I have to rescue it on my external HD mm -hmm. and prepare for for showing you Maybe. but it's it's it, it, the, the indications that the for surgery is it's controversy is it's, it's it's hard to to learn we have to to uh, to to accompany a lot of patients to to 
start. Uh, I, I have very difficult to learn how to indicate correctly uh, 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 as this procedure for spine disease. Yes, because when, when on Instagram uh, the, a case like this uh, comes in and discussions, I, I really can understand it. It's, it seems a very complicated area. So it's, uh, yes, yes. You have to understand the concept of instability to, 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 to understand the that's fusion surgery, you have to understand the, this concept, instability of spine, the movement, the biomechanical uh, uh, concepts. We can talk about uh, that, but it's a, it's a long... Uh, yeah, no, uh, okay. No, no, it's, it's a lecture. We, we, lecture. When you have uh, uh, some elements uh, uh, removed, like a disc, you have to, to put something at this, this the uh, to, mm -hmm. to su substituting, you know, mm -hmm. like an artificial disc. It can be an artificial disc, or it can be a, a cage, like a cage. Uh, oh, like a, a static. A uh, yes, a static uh, 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 static mm -hmm. cage that you yeah. you you put with uh, bone grafts inside. And we will uh, perform the fusion of the both uh, vertebral bodies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, does it, does it uh, when you operate the patient with herniation, you replace the body? I mean, do you often replace the body if there's herniation? No, no. You, you, re you. If you operate only disc herniation, you can yeah. replace only the disc. You can keep the the, the vertebral body. I, I mean, but you replace the disc, and is there any any uh, is the movement the same, or are there any? any no, no. You, it, uh, it depends. If you use a, a cage with bone graft, you remove all the movement. It will be an static uh, uh, yes, yes, uh, yes, yeah. like, segment. Like, yes. Like completely uh, passive. You cannot move. Exactly. Right? It, 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 it will perform a fusion uh, between both vertebral bodies. So. The movement it has no more movement. It's an aesthetic segment. But if you use a, a, a like John Bennett said, an artificial disc, you can keep the movement. It's not exactly the physiologic movement, but, yeah, but keep there is some, uh, some parts of movement. Yes, exactly. But in, in, in you, the most part we use an aesthetic. Uh, uh, because the uh, when you have a fracture, uh, you use a, a cage. When you have a severe degenerative disease, we use cages. Uh, it's the indications for mechanical prosthesis. Prosthesis is very restrict. You know? uh, the indications to use a artificial disc is very restrict. It's very narrow. Uh, yes, exactly. Thank you very much. This this was oh. a mini like go, and I'm, I really learned a lot because I was uh, there is one one friend of mine who has uh, L an L five herniation, and she's going to be operated soon. So I was interested. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I had some, but I wanted to check this. So, and it's really yeah, it, uh, good to listen. It's very controversial because there are some surgeons that do not like to f perform the fusion. So in these cases, we advocate that the soon the patients have uh, maybe will get in pain again. Mm -hmm. So you, if you perform the fusion, uh, we have you have another complications uh, like uh, adjacent level disease, a degenerative disease. Uh, you, you can uh, start degenerative in the disc above, you know. So it's a, a controversy, a very controversial uh, field. Very interesting, very interesting. But if you understand the concept of instability of spine, mm -hmm. you can understand better the, the indications for fusions. You basically indicate the fusion when you to, to prevent or to treat an instability. It, it's it's a segmental uh, fail, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like it's a building. 
if you remove uh, 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 the base of the, the, the building, you have an instability. You, can you understand? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like a, it's, it's basically a biomechanical concept, yes. Yes, yes, yes. But how do you determine instability and, and stability? How do you determine it? Yes, there are some... Uh, we have uh, the three columns of Denny, if you, if you look for it. Okay. It's, it, you basically divide the, the column in three parts, the interior and the medial part. The interior is the disc, uh, 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 the half, uh, anterior half of the disc. Uh, yes, let me show you some okay. features. So, so, yeah, I can, it's very, it's very easy. You, you divide the column in three parts, anterior, the medial part, and the posterior part. If you have a, a, a impairment of the two or more columns, you you set this column as a in, instability. Yes, yes. So two two must be uh, two must be arranged. Two, two or yes, two or more. Yeah, yeah. It's very interesting. Yes. Yeah. Yes, this is the this this three columns is. Mm -hmm. Let me show you. I can see that lots of people have problems. So. Here is the interior column, yeah, yeah, the yeah. middle column, and the posterior column. Uh, the, the, if you have the if you compromise uh, two of these segments, you 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 can say that this column is unstable. Mm -hmm. very, very, very. It's great. Because I okay. see that many people have problems with this. It seems that this spinal instability becomes... Uh, because this, this friend of mine, she is only 23 years old. She already developed herniations. And, uh, I mean, it's very interesting that... that doesn't yeah. uh, she's athletic she's not uh, obese or overweight or anything so looks very athletic but she didn't train anything either. so I'm, I'm really interested how, how this yeah the the cause of the degenerative is still not very clear yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, uh, you uh, w what we know that the dogs d doesn't ha doesn't have so so it's a uh, it's for it's a human's conditions. Yeah, yeah, vertical, Maybe because we are spine. bipeds. Yeah, exactly. The erect spine, er, erect of spine, yeah. cause this this gravity <laughs> uh, problems yes. with loads. Uh, I have one one thought, but I, I hope we are not online, so I can tell it that we are not live. Uh, I think oh no, we're not live. Very huge press, but no, <laughs> because of the <laughs> huge breasts, yeah, so maybe this weights for you too much. Really, she's specific to that, and I think that because she developed hyperlordosis. Uh, I mean, in women, it's usually they have more profound hyperlordosis. She also has, so I think that maybe the weight of the upper body is the cause, but it's all speculation. Thank you very much. It's, it's really great, and it's really great to hear something about this lecture. Very good. Okay, hey, Ber thanks everybody for coming. Bernardo, thanks a lot for okay, showing up. Okay, it's a pleasure. Thank you. I'm very Thank glad. you so much. Okay, and we'll see all you guys soon. I'll send you okay. the I'll send you the okay. copy of the video. Bye bye. Please. Have a okay, nice Bernardo, day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Slavin. Thanks, bye, Marco. Slavin. Bye, okay. everybody. Goodbye, Slavin. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. See you.